baptism is required for salvation. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to ask about the, the, the cases where people are they're not able to get baptized or um, otherwise say a child, would you say that a child that's not baptized would be condemned? And would you say someone who believes but isn't baptized because they don't have the, the means to do so right. um, would be condemned? Okay, do you want to stay on and respond to my answer, or are you just hanging up? Um, I don't really have a response. I can hang up. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, it doesn't matter to me, whatever you want to do. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, if a response is necessary, because mm-hmm. I just want to know what you believe or what you would say. Right. So in Matthew, uh, let's see here. Let me find it. Matthew 25, there's a parable about the ten virgins. I was going to pull it up, but I'll just tell you what the Bible is reading. You can you can study it. But it's about the ten virgins, sir. And some of them, five of them were wise and five were foolish. And in verse 10, it says, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and that, that and they that were ready went in with him uh, to the marriage. So you have to be ready, sir. And it says, And the door was shut. In verse 11, Afterward came also the other virgin saying lord open up to us and he answered and said i will not so there is a time frame sir that when you can wait too long so the question about if in another country uh if they can't get baptized what about if they can't get a bible in there or a preacher to hear about jesus and then your question about children uh children are innocent see we don't believe children are born in sin so therefore children do not have to be baptized to wash away their sins because they have no sin. Okay, okay, well I understand that. I guess to the first part about someone who couldn't get baptized because of, say, the country that they're born in or being mm-hmm. under persecution or something of the sort, you said it, it's a time, um, I, I guess, to where you have to do those things. So are you saying that that person who believes but could not be baptized would be condemned or not? Uh, well, unfortunately, uh, you know, if you know the conversion of Saul, he, he prayed and he fasted. But then in Acts twenty two sixteen, he was told to arise and be baptized. It's the same account, but it happened uh, there. Um, so he was told to arise and be baptized and wash away his sins. So he was still in sin. So when a person dies uh, in sin, we would all think that they're lost. And so that is where you contact, and that's tomorrow morning about baptism, but that would be where God removes your sin, the blessings of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is applied to your account, and yeah, that person would be lost, unfortunately. But now we do serve a God that maybe would, uh, you know, get a preacher in there. I mean, that's why we support missionaries and all that. If if you don't mind, I want to answer it. I just wanted to know your stance on that. Okay, and Desmond's going to respond, uh, but you can go ahead and hang up. I mean, or you can listen to him and reply. Okay, okay there's another caller. All right, all right. I'll be quick about it, but you think about the Calvinists where they believe that, you know, I'm not saying all Calvinists, because there's different brands of this, but they believe that you're pretty much, okay. yeah, you're pretty, you're pretty much chosen from, you know, from the beginning of time in order to be saved. But it's kind of the same way, the, the way you look at baptism too, though, because like, let's just say someone's in prison and they believe in God, you know, that someone gives them gospel and that, but they're not able to be baptized because they don't have no access to water. If they don't have access to water, regardless of their belief, they still go to hell. And so in that sense, it's no different than what the Calvinists would present. Because that guy, you know, that guy doesn't present them grace, even though they believe. Well, uh, we got another caller. Hang on, I'm just going to respond to to your statement, Desmond. Uh, okay. We're we're way different when we talk about Calvinists. Calvinists believe it's the individual person uh, is saved, regardless of what he or she uh, does. There is a predestination that teaches in the Bible. That's Ephesians one, but the the it, it is more of the plan or or what they must do, and that's what's predestined. So, and I did say. Perhaps may God do that. I'm not going to say that person is saved or lost, but we do serve a powerful God. Um, so I just wanted to respond to that, Desmond, because I am not supporting Calvinism whatsoever. No, no, no. I was just saying there's, there's, there's some similarities, so that's what I was pointing yeah. to. All right, caller. Uh, you'd probably be the last call. The 20 minutes is up. So if you want to go ahead and ask your question, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I'll hang up as soon as I'm done asking the question. I'm going to pre- uh, I'm going to assume that both you and Desmond are uh, Trinitarians. You believe in the Triune Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Right. So this is a question to both of you: What is the role of each member of the Triune Godhead in salvation? 
Okay. And I'll hang up. Thank you. All right. You can start. Okay. Well, uh, when I, I refer as God, the Godhead. Uh, sorry, if you're watching this for any more callers, that's the last call. Now, you can get up at 930. We're going to have this again because we'll sit here all night and the times went out, as you can see the timer. And uh, I'm sorry, but again, you can call tomorrow. Uh, and I do appreciate everyone watching. I know Desmond does too. But the Godhead is what I'll refer to. you got God the Father, you got Jesus, and you got the Holy Spirit. So how would all three members play out in salvation? Well, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. That's referencing to the Father. He sent his only begotten Son. That would be referencing to Jesus, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God so loved the world that he sent Jesus. Jesus is the sacrifice. That's why I stress, friends, in Acts 10, the miraculous gifts don't wash away sins. You are overlooking the cross of Christ. Okay, when, you, when you're saying miraculous gifts, the blood, the precious blood had to be spilled and applied to your account. So God sent his son, God the Father. Jesus died on the cross for the world, bringing salvation to all those that uh, comply to what Jesus says and the Holy Spirit says they'll be saved. And the Holy Spirit was given in a miraculous way to the apostles and other writers. And through the Spirit, these men wrote it down. So how does the Holy Spirit convict the world today? It is through the Bible that Desmond has, the Bible that I has, and when you comply to that, you have the Godhead saving you through salvation. So that's what I would answer that caller. And for me, as far as like, um, so you got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I would say Trinity 